McDonald's garage. Today we have some Italian royalty. Either one of these on its own would be unbelievable. To have both of them here is quite an honor. Uh, we have a Fiat 131. This is a Group 4 rally car. And this is a Lancia Delta S4. Group B, the crazy, <laughs> craziest car ever built. Well, you, we'll get into the specifics of this in just a minute. We're going to meet the owner. He's the most enthusiastic guy about these cars. These both cars run. They're not replicas. These are cars that actually won the races they competed in. It's really exciting. Let's bring in John Campion. John, come on in, my friend. Fine Italian fella. <laughs> yeah, really. Dodgy Irish guy. Dodgy Irish, Irish guy. guy. So, first of all, what got you into, into rally? I know rallying is so much bigger in Europe than it is here. I wasn't particularly good in school. Really? Yeah, yeah, right. oh, who, who, well, I knew we had something in common. Exactly. Yeah. But in Ireland in the sort of 60s and 70s, you were looking for inspiration. Right. Somebody. Right. Right, get me out of this, what's going on here? So it was three people. It was Thin Lizzy. Right. Rory Gallagher, right. blues guitar player. And it was a local hero called Billy Coleman. Billy was a farmer. And uh, in 1973, himself and his brother pulled a Mark I Ford Escort out of a ditch. And they rebuilt it. And then they put it on a single axle trailer, pulled it with a Cortina estate, took it to England. Now, Irish, right. going to England in 74, right. tough gig. And they competed in the RAC Championship. And they won. With I this mean, car they built themselves. Yeah, yeah, against the factory teams. Wow. So I'm growing up, and this is like, this guy's a rock star. Right. So in 78, uh, I was in a, I was, used to go to, to the stages, and I was at this particular stage with my father and my brother. Seven o'clock in the morning, mist coming up off the ground, real hobbit stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And around a corner comes Billy in a Stratos. And a Stratos was, in 1978, a Stratos in Ireland was a spaceship. Right, right. And it yeah. comes around a corner sideways, and I was like, what in the name of God is this? So then I came to America, and uh, in sort of typical fashion of sort of Irish guy does okay, right. bought all the requisite Ferraris. Right. Then I woke up one day, and I was like, these don't mean that they're, they're not me. Right. They're you know the the you know the F40 and all the rest of them. They're not me. Right. So I sold them all. Okay. Did okay actually, and I started buying rally cars. Okay. And then the, the passion for the rally cars kicked in. It's kind of like a Pokemon. You gotta right. start to collect them all. I get it. Well, I, yeah, well, I've been to your collection in Florida. Yeah. It's quite impressive. So you start going at it, and then you start getting into the history. And for me, it's the research. And you putting the research in, calling the people, and then getting it together, and, and the whole nine yards. So what we have is we have a pretty extensive collection of, of rally cars. These two cars are rather interesting. That's why we brought them. Thank you for the invitation. This particular car ran in America. And when we bought the car, we got banker's boxes full of telexes. Right. Now, Jim Walker, he's now in his 70s, uh, convinced Fiat, Abarth, and Alitalia to supply him a car to run in Michigan. We found the car in, in, uh, in Belgium, brought it back to America. Um, now, you know, you, you've bought enough cars. You know when you buy a car, you, if you can't go yourself, you send somebody. Right. And you just want to know the state of it. Right. I mean, if it's got a blown engine, it's got a blown engine. We just want to know. Right. So the guy says, uh, we said, can we start it? No, you can't start it. Can we put it in gear and push it back and forth? No, you can't do that. So I figured, <laughs> you know, we know what we got. So we bring it back. We rebuild the entire car. And one of the coolest things was uh, Jim Walker in his 70s. Oh, about six months ago, got to drive the car. So that's that car. It's got a, it's got a um, two liter uh, twin overhead cam, four cylinder. Right. Makes sort of 275 horsepower. Wow, that's quite a bit. It is. Especially for the period. Yeah. And it's a two valve, right? Not a four valve. It's two. Yeah, yeah. It'll get down the road. Yeah. And it's got a crash box. Right. It's, it's visceral. This is one side of it. Now, bear in mind, this is 19. And this particular, not this particular car, but this series of cars won the world championship in 77, 78, and 79. Right. So in 1979 AC, we go from this, which is, as we described, four cylinder, you know. What old, you think a Fiat is, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the same factory, Abarth, in five years, turns out this. Yes. Now these were just the craziest thing. They threw the rule book out. Yeah, I, I guess so. And this is making. What, 500 horsepower? We've got this at about 550. Okay. <laughs> so it's a 1.8, four-cylinder, right. 
and twin charged. So it's a supercharged and a turbo. So obviously the problem back in the day was your turbos didn't spin up fast enough, so you had a lot of turbo lag. Right. So what they did was say, oh, we'll figure this out. We'll put a supercharger on it. Right. So she supercharges up, and then she bleeds that, and then goes into the turbo. So it takes it to like 3,500, and then the oh, yeah. turbo comes in. Okay. And when you're driving the car, all you hear is wastegates going right. shh, 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 yeah, bleeding right. off. Right. Now, what's very strange about the car, the car doesn't weigh a lot. It's all Kevlar. You sit on the fuel tanks. OK. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. No, no. No, nothing wrong with that. You sit on the fuel tanks. And this is the car that actually got Group B banned. Uh, there was a few accidents and right. you know, just a bad situation. It's just a crazy looking car. People are always uh, are interested in what's going on in the front wheel. Right, now being Italian, it looks like some sort of pizza plate. It does, Probably, doesn't it? Not the, that's what it is. It's thinned like a turbine on the inside yeah. and it pulls in. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because you would think having the ho holes in it would cool it more, but no, it doesn't. It just it, looks cool. Yeah, it, it, it cools better like that. Yeah, they didn't make a lot of these. They made 27, there's very few left. Right. A lot of them in the museums can't get them. So we found it. We enjoy the cars a lot. We drive the cars, we take them to a lot of shows. It's important to run the cars. Right. Even just for the health and maintenance of the cars. But it's also important to show these people the cars. To show them what they can do, yeah. yeah. And, and I love the story, because you see, my mother's from, from Greenock, Scotland. So when I was a kid, Jim Clark was oh. always my guy. You know, in the same way the Irish show. So to me, I, w I was never a, a big fryer guy. I certainly liked them. I liked yeah. the cars. But to me, I liked that sort of, you know, Shelby's a chicken farmer, and, uh, yeah. and you know, and, and, and uh, Jim, uh, Jimmy Clark was a sheep herder. Or Correct. Whatever was. You know, so just that sort of. Lotus Cortina guy. Yeah, up from the ranks. Right, yeah. Lotus Cortina, yeah. That, that's why I like your collection. I think it's fantastic. And it's, uh, we have. Um Sort of on a, a bit of a sad note, on both of these cars, we just put them on there, we have this ribbon. I saw this, Manus Kelly. Yeah, um, 41 years old, and he, uh, he died in the Donegal Rally. 41 years old, five kids. So I thought to myself, we were doing the show, and I just thought it'd be a good way to honor him. Yeah, no, I think it's a great way to honor him. Um, so anyway, so we decided to put those on, and it's just a little bit of a, an homage to a, a great Irishman who uh, was very passionate. Oh, that's great, that's great. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear it, but it, it looks good on there. Let's, can we open up the hood? Let's sure. take a look under this uh, here. Why don't you go around that side and I I'll shall. pull this pin. Let's look at the uh, rather boring. Uh... Well, I, I want to do it just to show the contrast. Yes. OK, I'm pull here that we up. go. And it looks, obviously, it's not stock, but it looks not that far from stock. It's, it's a little noisy, bad boy. And obviously, it's the twin overhead cam right. and two liter. Abarth heads. Did and they run with an open belt like oh, yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. They were called Mirafioris in Ireland when I grew up. Yeah. And uh, they were manufactured everywhere from Turkey to Egypt on, under license. Right, right. I remember that. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun little car. But again, I think what's really, really interesting, this car, five years later, we get to that. Right, right. And that's, that's a huge jump. That's like going from the Wright brothers to landing on the moon. It is. Basically. OK, let's put this down again. And the car has a straight cut gearbox, correct? Correct. Uh, and it's just it's pretty rudimentary inside. A couple of fuel pumps, Right. some clocks. Well, the fun thing about it is it's close enough to stock that if you have one, you can identify with you know, I mean, I imagine this sold a lot of Fiats, didn't they? This is a oh, yeah. classic case of race on Sunday, sell on Monday. Exactly. You know, and that's, and I kind of like that. Yes. Because this is unattainable, whereas somebody could have one of these and have the same car that won exactly. any number of races, you know. Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a dry sump, which is, which is rather interesting back here. Right. It's a... Uh... Okay, so you're, God, that's a big dry sump. What do you got about... Uh, 10 quarts? Something like that, yeah. 10, 12 quarts in there? Yeah, there you go. Now, bearing in mind, you're, 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 you're jumping, you're going through this, you're doing right. that, you're doing the other thing. So. But it's uh, a lot of research into putting it back the way it was. Now, let's get to the creme de la creme here, because this is the one I know you've been waiting to show it. Well, uh, the, under the hood of this thing, it's just, boy, it is pretty light. Look at that. Kevlar. 
just the craziest piece of work I've ever seen. And obviously it's not based on a street car. It's, 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 it's total, an evolution. Yeah, it's a total race car from yeah. the get-go. I mean, the fun part about this is, like we said before, it's based on a car you could buy. You could modify the car your dad had into this. Yes. You couldn't do that with this. But they built about 200 really boring kind of look-alike right. for homologation. Right. But they were like 200 horsepower. Right, right. Um, what, what, what intrigues me is they went from this in five years to this. Right. Supercharged, turbocharged, I mean, just absolutely 550 horsepower, 1.8 liter, four-wheel drive. And if you the back of the car, people see it and they think you've got three exhausts. Right. Well, this is an exhaust, and these are wastegates. Right. Because as you're building pressure to about 3,500 on the supercharger, it then starts bleeding the supercharger and starts making boost on the turbo. Right. So when you're driving it all, you hear which is cool. pretty cool stuff. Now, let me ask you, when obviously there were no rules, but there were some rules, could you be no bigger than 1.8 or two well, liter was the max? So you, so there was a, there was a one and a half um, multiple. So this was a 1.8. Right. And this was under the two and a half liter class. Okay. Because it was turboed. Okay. They didn't tell them about the supercharger. Oh, well, I, that's funny. <laughs> As you don't. Oh, I see. So it's 1.8. So it, with the with the turbo, it equals two and a half liter. Yeah, or whatever the math is. Yeah, yeah whatever. Okay. I wasn't gotcha. good at school. I said. And, and how many how many speed gearbox? Uh, it's got a five. Five speed. And it's a synchro. Oh, it is synchro. It's a synchro. Why? Uh, I have no idea, because most of them are crash boxes. Crash boxes are more efficient, right? Right, right. I think that excess horsepower. Who cares? Right, right. Um, the um, the car itself, it's zero to sixty two point three seconds. Really, two point three? Oh yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's quite an easy car to drive until you make the mistake of stomping it. Well, we'll explain that. Well, you're sort of you're not you're driving it. Right. You're like fifteen hundred RPM, two thousand yeah, RPM. Yeah, sure. You're going for you know going for a coffee or whatever. Right. It's all right. good. And then you decide, okay, the traffic light turns red to green. Oh, do you stomp on it? I thought you said stop it. No, oh, stomp, stomp on, on it. Oh, stomp on it, okay. Oh, then it's just yeah. hell open to sinners. Okay. Your side. Hell open to sinners, sinners. is it? No. Jesus. Hell open to sinners is what you got here, though. Yeah. But, I mean, look at the, look at the intercoolers. I mean, there's just the yeah. craftsmanship yeah, I mean, in the car. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, it really the, is. The, you know, the heim joints here. I mean, it's just absolutely. We were very lucky to get this car, and um, it's probably a conversation piece. It is. It is. Now, we said earlier, this is the car that caused Group B to be banned. Right. In 86, there was an unfortunate accident in, in Italy, and a famous driver ended up, literally, it was a fireball. You wow. Because you sit on the fuel tank. And what happened? Did it come over a berm, crash down, and split yeah, he the Yeah, he was a world class driver, and he went over a berm, and uh, he. Uh, he, the sort of story was he wasn't feeling a bit of a cold and he wasn't 100% on his game that day. That's yeah. sort of, and yeah. went off and instant death. Um, oh boy. Yeah, uh, and that was the end of that. Um, and that was the end of Group B. And then they went to Group A, which was effectively just regular stock cars. And were these cars not virtually worthless at the time, but was it that? These race cars. Yeah, they were used race cars. They were not, I mean, now it's a valuable car. It's a yeah. crazy, crazy valuable car. But even 30 years ago, once they banned it, it was like, well, that's yeah. What, 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 what are you going to do with it? So, exactly, yeah. one of those deals. Look, I was I was lucky, as I said earlier. Um, I had a, a passion for the rally cars, and I got rid of the Ferraris at the right time. Right. And I started buying these when people didn't really uh, have as much of an appreciation for them. Right. Uh, nowadays, I gotta sort of go through a third party because if my name is attached to it, it's gonna cost me more money. Right. You right. know the story. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Jay Leno's buying the car. Oh, and Jay's, you know, it'll be a few bit more expensive there now. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. it's uh, it's just a lot of fun. We're probably gonna take it to Europe next year. Yeah. And we're gonna do a few uh, a few historic rallies. Right. And, and you can run this in a historic rally. Oh yeah. But can you run? You can't run. Can you run flat out? Like, or is I wouldn't want to. No, no. But I wouldn't want to. Yeah. So I was uh, I was talking to a friend of yours yesterday, and he took his 935 to Goodwood. Right, right. With a red car. Right, right. And uh, I was talking to him, and I said to him, "Listen," I said, "You were running up the hill, and you got to the flint wall." And I said to him, "Were you? You know, how how were you?" And he said, "No, it's fine." And he says, "Oh, I, you, I've been invited." And I said. Uh, I don't know which car I take because it scared the hell out of me. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like there's there's always the story about the 
more uh, more money than talent. Right, right. Yeah, that exactly. You see, I never want to be the guy who shows up with this race suit. Hey, guys, yeah. I'm here to go. You know, I'm, you know, exactly. So I don't want to be that guy either. Right, right. There you go. Yeah. There you go. But, well, uh, I'm glad you're this guy because you're saving history. Yeah. And you brought it here for people to see because people don't get to see these kind of cars. They get locked away in collections and they don't get used. It's why I like to drive my stuff. You know, when you, when you see them here, it's interesting. When you see them on the road Good. compared to other cars, it's like, oh my God, you really see the difference. And you're driving it. Right. And then there's all these people who are like, what is that? Especially the steam. Yeah, yeah. Oh, steam cars. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. are like, what? The, what's going on here? Well, he's a big steam guy. But I grew up with steam. Yeah. But when, when when we're done here, I'll take you next door. Yeah, we're gonna look at some steam. We'll, we'll do some steam. My dad would be proud. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, which one are you gonna drive? This one. This is probably the most streetable, isn't it? Yeah. Look. You have to drive this. Right. Right. Even if it's just up and down the street. Okay. Just because you have to. Right. You have to. Look, I walk through your shop. Right. And I think I saw a McLaren F1. Right. Which is probably an outrageous car. Right, right, right. So if you've got a McLaren F1, which you regularly drive, right. you have no choice. We've got no choice. It's so a legal legally, requirement. Legally, Legal. I have to drive this one. You have to. Mm-hmm. <laughs>